When members of a certain generation are watching TV, they've been known to ask the younger people in the room to turn up the volume, a request that some state-of-the-art hearing aids could make obsolete. Our cover story is reported by David Pogue. Meet Dick Pogue, Cleveland lawyer. He's 91 years old, he goes to the office six days a week, and he's my dad. Oh, you dog. <laughs> my dad doesn't make many concessions to aging. About the only one I've noticed is that he wears hearing aids. There it is. Under what circumstances do you wear them? Movies? W wear them at movies, yes. And watching TV? I do wear them watching television. Um, talking to mom? When I'm listening to her. <laughs> Most people with hearing loss get it by getting older. Two out of three people over 70 have trouble hearing. But what's really surprising is how many of them don't get hearing aids. On average, about 20% of adults who have a hearing loss actually use a hearing aid. I mean, 20%. So is it true that too much rock music can lead to early hearing loss? Yeah, so I think loud noise exposure is by far one of the biggest risk factors for hearing loss as we age. Okay. Frank Lynn is an ear surgeon Turn your head to the left. and professor at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. His research shows that hearing loss is associated with higher risks of hospitalization, depression, and especially dementia. So why don't more people seek treatment? First, the price. The average cost to get a pair of hearing aids in the United States is about $4,700, which is remarkable, right? Because that basically means then for the average American that this could be their third largest material purchase in life after house and a car. Wow. So it's incredibly expensive. How much of hearing aids does insurance cover? So the vast majority of insurance companies don't cover hearing aids. So Medicare right now, which is obviously a major insurer for all older adults, uh, does not cover hearing aids or any type of hearing treatment services around hearing aids. But cost is only one obstacle. Some people are also embarrassed to wear hearing aids. Some people don't realize how much smaller hearing aids have become over the decades. And some people are put off by the hassle of getting them. In the US, you currently can't get hearing aids without testing and consultation with a doctor or audiologist. Today, most of the world's hearing aids are made by six companies. Only one is headquartered in the US, and that's Starkey, near Minneapolis. I've been in everybody's ears. <laughs> Starkey's founder and CEO is Bill Austin. Ford, Reagan, Clinton. He's had some experience. You didn't treat the Pope, did you? Actually, we did. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't actually need hearing aids, yet. So it's a light and a camera? But Starkey's team treated me to a Pope-worthy fitting experience. That's amazing. First, a cleaning. You do have narrow hair canals. I know. I wanted to give you a challenge. All right, and there's your eardrum. Wow. That's a sight a lot of TV correspondents never show their viewers right there. I'm ready. All Into right. the chamber. Yeah. Then, the hearing test. You do have small ear canals. Yeah. I'm getting that. Say the word skin. Skin. Toe. Toe. Owl. Owl. Shakespeare at eight. <laughs> uh, you have a narrow opening here. That seems to be the takeaway today. Then a molding session for hearing aids that will exactly fit into my ears. So this is called taking an impression? Yes. This blue liquid plastic takes about five minutes to solidify. Oh. I can hear again. And voila, you make a good impression. Technicians have to fit all the electronics into a tiny shell that will disappear completely inside your ear. That's it. That's all you need. All right. I'm going to slip this in your right ear. OK. Can you see it? Can you you see can't it? see any hearing aids there. Or you can get the kind that slips over your ear. There you go. Oh, that's nice. They have room for a lot more features. You can listen to music from your phone or make phone calls. They even have different presets for different sonic environments. I'll have one that would be more for crowd or when you're in a noisy area. Think that sounds fancy? You ain't heard nothing yet. It will transform the hearing aid 
with sensors and artificial intelligence to become a true gateway to your health. Starkey's chief technology officer, Achin Bomik, met me inside one of the company's echo-proof testing chambers. He's adding more sensors to their hearing aids. This new model, for example, can count up your steps like a Fitbit. It can even notify loved ones if you fall. But probably the number one technology most hearing loss sufferers would like to see now is just the ability to understand someone talking across the table from you right. in a restaurant. Why yes. can't we lick that? Yes, I think we are close to cracking the problem. We will be able to do that by detecting where are you looking? Are you looking at me? Are you looking at the person over there? But even basic hearing aids cost an ear and a leg. And this is why. That looks good. Two thirds of the price is all those doctor services, testing, customization, and follow up, all bundled in that price. But Frank Lynn became convinced that people with mild hearing loss don't need all that. They might be content with something more generic that costs a tenth as much. The importance of the present bill is instructing the FDA to carry So his out team worked with Congress to successfully pass a new bill. For the first time, you'll be able to buy hearing aids over the counter. Which effectively means by August of 2020 that we will have um, the ability for companies to basically sell hearing aids directly to consumers. Companies like Bose, Samsung, Apple could all enter the market now. One, it helps the access, obviously, because you don't need a prescription. Yeah. Two, yeah. the costs could come way down. Right? Yep. The six big companies yep. who make hearing aids are yeah. taking direct aim at their spreadsheet. Yes and no. It's an industry and a profession and a practice that's been built up over the last several decades. And now we're disrupting the model. If we think hearing is so important for public health, then that's how we need to advance the field. The new law will create a new class of hearing aids, much less customized, but also much less expensive. They may resemble these devices. So these are PSAPs personal sound amplification product. Nicholas Reed is an audiologist at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. These PSAPs are on the market today, but legally they can't be called or marketed as hearing aids. But when this new law kicks in, some of these things on the table here might now be allowed to be called hearing aids. Uh, I think several of these items on the table um, would meet the standards that will be set up. Some of these over-the-counter devices have some pretty cool features, too. I tried them out. This is the super ear. Oh, this is the microphone That's here? the mic, yeah. So I could kind of sit like this, oh. and it's bulky, but you get a nice signal. And it feels kind of cheap. It can't be that expensive. I think these retail at $79.99. Yeah. yeah, $80. This is Bose. I think it's a $500 device. Let's turn on the device. You're probably so getting... wait a minute, are these noise canceling? These have noise cancellation. Because all of a sudden, the general hiss of the room went away. You, yourself, did a study. Yeah. And you compared these two, three, four, five hundred dollar things with these multi-thousand dollar hearing aids. Yeah. And what were the results? In a controlled environment, they improved speech understanding about as well as a hearing aid. As you could probably guess, the big hearing aid companies say they're not as good as their products. In a uh, restaurant or backgrounds of noise, they just don't, they don't perform. Chris McCormick is the chief marketing officer at Starkey. So what's going to happen when people are allowed to buy hearing aids without the audiologist services? The concern is people trying to self-diagnose, people trying to self-program. The products will have to be standardized. And the problem with that is everybody's hearing is different. So everyone noticed a difference when you try them on? Bottom line? The world of hearing aids is about to improve dramatically. They recharge in their case and then they both at the expensive end and thanks to that new law over the counter. We're going to switch to your left ear, okay? In the meantime, if you're among the 80% who could use hearing aids but haven't looked into it, say the word room. Room. Well, I'll give the last word to my dad. Are you able for a minute to imagine uh, your life? without the hearing aids? Well, I wouldn't be able to work. I mean, I, I couldn't go to meetings. I couldn't hear people. It, it would just cause me to isolate myself and, and be at home and very seldom go out. It would be a dramatically different life. I, I would not like it. <laughs>